The recent end of Expedition 47 marked the conclusion of the on-orbit portion of some International Space Station experiments that we've been talking about a lot, including cognition and microbiome, as well as ocular health, the experiment looking into the reasons why some crew members suffer diminished vision after a long-duration stay on orbit. Recently, my colleague Pat Ryan spoke with the lead increment scientist for Expeditions 47 and 48, Yuri Gernhart Ramirez, and uh, about some of the uh, new experiments getting started on this expedition and about what happens next for research that is wrapped up on orbit. We have a huge milestone in completion of these investigations that started many expeditions ago. Uh, and require a lot of these subjects to complete. Now that the sub our final set of subjects uh, is home, these investigations will undergo what we call post-flight BDC base data collection. Uh, essentially, they'll go through similar type of in-flight uh, measurements like they did during in-flight, and they will collect the data uh, to figure out essentially what happens after they come home. And some of these collections take uh, it could be three months, uh, it could be six months, and in the case of ocular health, for example, it can take close to a year to continue to take these uh, different measurements uh, of the eye in the vision, including uh, tests that were not part of the in-flight portion, oh. uh, like MRIs uh, and, and other ways to assess the health of the eye. Uh, so after all the scientists uh, gather all that data, they'll have lots and lots and lots of uh, mounds of data to go through and try to figure out what the big picture is telling us across all the different subjects through the years on all these various health issues that we're, we're trying to understand better for, for space flight. Had they gotten a start on that? Had they been reviewing the on-orbit data from the prior subjects already and, and they're not saving it all up for one time? Well, they can, they can start assessing some of it. They can understand whether or not we think we have viable data. Uh, some of these investigations require it's body samples, and some of those uh, came home with SpaceX 8. We had a huge, a huge uh, set of samples that came home for human research with that, with that mission return. Others uh, have taken place after SpaceX 8 for the specific crew members, uh, for example, with micro, uh, microbiome, and those will have to wait until those samples come home to finally be able to put all the, the puzzle pieces together of all the data and uh, continue to assess the post-flight data collections, if you would. Expedition 47 meant the end of some experiments. Expedition 48 has got its own experiments that are occupying the, the crew on orbit. Uh, tell me what you think are, are some of the highlight experiments that we'll be seeing happen over the next three months or so. Certainly. We, uh, there's a, a lot of investigations that continue. Uh, one of those, uh, actually an interesting pair, is uh, CSA, the Canadian Space Agency, has MARO. And that's an investigation that's looking to understand how the bone marrow uh, transitions from its natural state into uh, more adipose or fat tissue, uh, if you would, in the bone marrow itself, uh, this adipose um, tissue. And so that is part of the natural bone process as we age to the, for that bone marrow to transition. However, they are looking at how the microgravity environment accelerates that. And that is analogous to patients that are in bed rest and have to undergo long periods without activity. And so they're trying to understand how that um, lack of microgravity loading on the body of the bone and marrow affects not just as we understand our muscular skeletal system, but deep inside into the bone marrow and those processes that could also affect the white cells and, and red cells count um, for possible um, mitigations in the future. Are there some experiments on Expedition 48 that are not human life sciences research, some other kinds of science? Oh, yes. We have uh, all sorts of investigations. One that we have con continued, uh, and uh, we've seen a lot of that during increment 47, and we may, uh, we may not continue through until increment 49. Perhaps it's uh, ESA's electromagnetic levitator. That is looking at a completely different um, process for solidification of samples. You have different samples of different metal alloys, uh, iron, copper, nickel, and different alloys that they're looking at how they solidify. And this particular um, apparatus that's out there allows us to process these batches of samples and watch through the high-speed cameras and thermo uh, pyrometers, thermo th thermometers, essentially mm -hmm. trying to assess the temperature, uh, 
quick heating or cooling and watching how that sample solidifies and the surface tension that occurs within that sample and it's levitating. Um, obviously, we have the microgravity, but the electromagnetic forces are keep, help to keep it in, in, place. in one place. And being able to watch how those processes happen can help us uh, potentially yield whole new revolutionary ways of manufacturing here on Earth. Uh, in a, a matter of uh, a few more weeks, there's another uh, SpaceX Dragon cargo ship that's coming to the station, and it's delivering some brand new science that uh, new to the station. Uh, tell me about some of the things that you'll find in there. We have a couple of very exciting investigations. Uh, again, SpaceX has come in with so many investigations to add to our portfolio. It's very exciting to have them arrive. Uh, in a few of those uh, include uh, JAXA's mouse epigenetics. Uh, and this is a very interesting investigation where uh, we we understand how DNA and uh, works, right? We have this DNA sequence that tells us, okay, you're going to be roughly this height and this build and some of those pieces of, of who we are. But we are learning more and more with the epigenetics side of the house that uh, there's this external to the genetics factors like diet, stress, and other different environmental conditions that actually affect how the gene expresses itself. So these functions that are happening outside of the genome itself are not changing your DNA sequence, that is what it is, but the fact that you may or may not be more susceptible to some diseases or you may or may not be more prone to certain things happening uh, is heavily influenced by this environment. And we're learning a lot about that and using our mice as a human model, uh, one of the, our, our model uh, organisms that we can study and, and translate that data, can help us understand uh, what is going to happen uh, for the mice that will be exposed for microgravity uh, during, my, during this period. And they'll come home, and then they'll be able to assess their epigenetic changes in, different, in the various organs they have, uh, as well as their uh, offspring. Uh, another one that's very, very, uh, very interesting is uh, heart cells. Uh, that's a NASA research investigation coming up. Uh, and there's a very fascinating couple aspects uh, to this investigation. The first is that the scientists have successfully taken skin cells and I would say deprogrammed them mm. uh, and turned those human skin cells into stem cells. Now, most people may be familiar with the fact that stem cells are those cells in the body when we're born that can turn into any kind of cell in the body, right? right? right. So we take, they've taken the skin, skin cells and deprogrammed them, and then once they are uh, turned into the, the stem cell, then they can go ahead and differentiate them or, or reprogram them into heart cells. And those uh, heart cells, living heart cells, uh, will be launching on, on SpaceX 9 coming to the space station uh, to undergo some uh, exposure and we'll, we'll have to study them uh, as they express themselves in the microgravity environment. And the hope is that eventually we might be able to better understand the cardiac impacts, not only to our crew members uh, as, a, as a result of the whole uh, spaceflight environment, um, but ideally we might, we might be able to eventually lead to revolutionary ways of heart disease treatments here on Earth. And that's uh, very, very hopeful. Very interesting few examples of uh, what's going to be going on in terms of science on board the station the next few months. And uh, we'll get you to come back and tell us about how the, how the operations have gone. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, uh, you. Yuri Gennard Ramirez is the Expedition 48 Lead Increment Scientist.